Hey guys, Magnetico here and welcome to my series of videos where we take video game systems, we clean them up, repair them if need be, and sometimes we mod them. And today we're going to be taking a look back at the GameCube that we repaired in the previous video. Now we weren't able to repair the disk drive, but we were able to clean it up completely. And if you remember, I actually bought this GameCube with disk drive not working with the intention that we were going to mod it in the future, which is exactly what this video is all about. What we're going to be installing into this GameCube is going to be three mods total. The first one is going to be the big one. It is called the GC Loader. The GC Loader lets you boot up GameCube ISOs in the same way that the X Station lets you boot up PlayStation games or the Fanroid Duo lets you boot up Sega Saturn games. That is what we're going to be implementing into the system, which I'm really excited about. The second mod is going to be a silent fan mod, which is not a requirement, but I highly recommend it because it'll make your GameCube run silently and the fan that we're going to be installing is actually more efficient than the one that was in there before. The last mod is going to be a battery replacement mod. The GameCube is infamous for not letting you replace the batteries. They soldered the battery to the actual like battery encasing, which was uh, kind of bizarre. But with this mod, we're able to replace that encasing and replace it with one that you can switch batteries in and out at your heart's content because we know that these systems are 20 plus years old now, so they definitely need a battery replacement for sure. I am super pumped and I am super excited to add all these mods to this GameCube and I do want to apologize and let you guys know that I know that it took super long to make this video but I was doing the research, I was buying the parts and also having those parts get shipped to me which made it take a little bit longer than usual so again my apologies but hopefully you guys are enjoying all the other videos that I have on this channel. If this is your kind of thing where somebody goes through and cleans up systems, repairs them if need be and sometimes mods them, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you're notified every time I post a video. All right, guys, let's get started. For this project, you're going to need the Nintendo GameCube. You're going to need a silent fan mod. That is optional, but I highly recommend it. A battery replacement mod. Some tools so we can do our work. I'll go ahead and link all the items in the description below as always. Gonna need a soldering iron, a solder remover. You can always use the solder wick braid as well, but I just bought this so I wanted to try it out. You're gonna need some solder and the GC loader and an SD card for it. So now that we have all these items, we can start work on the actual GameCube itself. We're gonna go ahead and flip it upside down and remove all the port doors. I do have a video describing on how to clean up and tear down the GameCube completely so you can do a complete cleanup that is in my previous video that you guys can check out. Otherwise, we're just gonna go ahead and open this up immediately. There's gonna be four screws at the bottom. Once you take those out, we should be able to flip this guy over and take off the lid with no problem. We're going to turn the GameCube to the side here. Before we get started on the screws, I'm going to take off this plastic piece here. Just make sure you put that somewhere safe. And now we're going to start working on these five screws on the side. The good news about the GameCube is all the screws are pretty much the same size. Not all of them, but most of them are. So you can start piling them. I start a pile on the top left of this screen there. Once you flip this over, there should be a screw on each side of this fan structure. I'm going to go ahead and remove those. And before you take off the fan structure, make sure you unplug the power to the fan. And that should allow you to remove the structure entirely. Put that aside. Three screws are revealed under the fan structure, so make sure you remove those. Finally, we're going to flip the GameCube to its backside here. And as you can see, there's four screws, again, all the same size. You can probably start noticing the pile on the top left of the screen there that I'm building. And with that last one there, I'm going to go ahead and flip this to the front. And I'm going to remove the front plate here. Be kind of careful with it. There is a ribbon that is attached to the system. So pull it gently and put this aside. We will be working on that a little bit later. Put your bit to something smaller. There are four screws that are holding uh, the memory card area together. So take those out, put it in a separate area because those are definitely different. And I'm going to take out these metal pieces. So with all of that, we can finally take off the disc structure here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this aside for now. We're actually going to start working on that laser structure almost immediately. I just wanted to show you guys what the inside of the GameCube looks like. 
So with the laser structure here, there are six screws that are on the bottom of it. And they're kind of in weird spots. Just make sure you use a smaller bit because these screws are kind of small. I will put, their, put them in a completely separate area than the other ones that I've been collecting. But once you remove all six screws, we can go ahead and flip this over and the laser itself should be removed pretty easily from the metal plate. So you can hang on to this, keep it, throw it out. I threw it out because it, mine doesn't work. And with the GC loader that you see here, we're no longer gonna need it. It does replace the laser structure completely. So here is the GC loader, a very cool board. So we're gonna be focusing on the mods here. We'll put this together here in just a moment. But before we do that, let's go ahead and work on the battery replacement first. This packet that I got actually came with a bunch of LED lights that we can replace. So whenever you turn on your GameCube, the light on the GameCube can be any color that you want, whether you want it to be green, blue, or anything. I kept mine stock. I was more worried about the battery replacement, but you guys can definitely do that. So with the front panel of the GameCube, there are two screws we have to remove. Just make sure you change your bit to something larger. You do not want to strip these screws. They're kind of hard to take out, kind of hard to put back in. But now we can finally remove the battery port from the plastic, which you can definitely clean. So with the battery port section here, I'm gonna take a pair of wire cutters and I'm gonna go ahead and cut these two pieces here. This is what attaches the old um, battery structure here. And once we cut these off here, just to make it easier to remove, I'm gonna take my new toy, which is my uh, solder sucker here and what it does is it melts the solder on anything that you put it on and you can press the button and It'll suck up all that melted solder into the tube, which is pretty nifty definitely recommend it So after performing two of those I Was actually able to remove the old battery structure pretty easily I just wiggled it and then boom it came right off and there's the issue the actual structure was soldered to the battery you couldn't replace it even if you wanted to, which I think is ridiculous. So I'm gonna take some solder wick here. Definitely recommend it just to get rid of all the little solder that is left over. Whenever I try to solder something back in, I like to start with a nice clean area. So this is me just making sure everything is nice and clean. And I will take some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush to clean this because this is an area we did not clean during the previous video. Take your time with it, make sure it's nice and clean. But once it's ready, we're gonna take this new structure here and we're gonna put the pins through the holes where the old one used to be. And the beauty about this one is you can replace the battery at any time. I don't know why this was designed the way that it was with Nintendo, but now this is a much better upgrade. And if the battery were ever to run out, you can replace it without having to deal with soldering or any other kind of issues. So I'm gonna solder these pins. Pretty easy to do, nothing too crazy here. And that's it, it's officially done. So we're gonna take our clean plastic piece and our updated, our modded controller port area and we can finally put a battery. I love how easy it is to replace the batteries on the GameCube now. If you're working on, on one, this is a mod, like a must have. I highly recommend it. It is probably one of the best mods on it that you can do. But the pins on the new uh, battery replacement are a little bit longer than I expected. So I went ahead and cut off the ends there. It doesn't hurt anything. I just wanted to scratch anything inside of the system. So with that done, we can finally put the controller port back into the plastic piece and we can take the two screws that we took out earlier and we can go ahead and put those back in. For now, this uh, front panel structure is done, so we can go ahead and put that aside. We're going to get started now with the GC loader, the star of the show. We're going to take the, the bottom shielding of the laser structure and the GC loader. There are three stickers covering the screw holes here, so we're going to have to remove those first. Once that's done, we can go ahead and place the GC loader on top of this metal shielding, as you can see here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it around. There are three screws we have to place to hold the GC loader together. So I'm gonna try to line them up as best as possible here, but once we get it, we can go ahead and grab the three screws that came with the GC loader and put those in. All right, once that's done, we can go ahead and flip this over. And that is basically it. That is the installation of the GC loader. We're gonna take the SD card that I bought. I got a 512 gigabyte. And that's it, we're done. Now we can finally put the system back together. So with the bottom portion here that we have for the GameCube, we can finally put this metal shielding on top, as you can see here. 
Without that laser, it definitely lost a lot of weight, <laughs> for sure. It's kind of weird seeing how empty this is. I'm gonna flip this system all the way around with the back facing me, and I'm gonna grab a bunch of these screws, the similar screws that we're, we were piling up earlier in this video. We're gonna start putting the system back together. We're pretty much done, only one more mod to go, but for now, we're just gonna go ahead and tidy up um, all these areas here. So we're gonna put four screws in the back. We're gonna turn the system to the side here, and there's five screws that go here. I only put four of them for some reason or another, but I end up getting that fifth one later on in this video. Don't worry, I didn't forget. For some reason, I thought there was only four, but once I put the screws there, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around to the next side and then grab three screws and put those in the middle here. So once we're done with that, we can finally put this aside for just a moment so we can work on our final mod, and that is the fan. So we're gonna take uh, this little wire out of this little power board, and there is one screw holding this whole thing together. So we're gonna go ahead and take out this black little screw. And once we do that, we're able to free this little power board, and that is what we need. You can hang on to this old fan if you need to, or throw it out, that's up to you. And we're going to place this little power board into the new fan mount, as you can see here. You can even use the same screw that you took out earlier to put the whole thing together. This fan is really quiet and it flows air really well. As you can see, it is modded. It has, does have a piece of tape that kind of holds it together. So it looks kind of kind of wonky, but it does work, which is pretty cool. So we're going to take our GameCube and place the fan structure back into place. Let's go ahead and plug in this little cable while we're at it. As you can see, the cable's kind of long. I'll have to figure out how I want to work that later on. And also, make sure you put it into place. These are all 3D printed. It should be pretty much the same dimensions, but if you have any difficulty, don't smash it. Just kind of try to put it into place as best as possible. Once you find a good spot, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the last power cord here for the fan mount. And I'm going to take the screws and put them into place. That long wire is kind of bothering me right now. Um, I'm not gonna lie, but I'll definitely have to figure out how to work it in this video or the next. And this is actually the part where I put in that fifth screw that I forgot about earlier. I told you guys I would not forget. So once we put that guy back in there, we're gonna put in the four screws that go in the front of the system. And those are the smaller, uh, the long screws. Let's go ahead and put in these metal pieces on first. And then make sure we get those four screws into place. Finishing touches here, I'm going to flip the system over and I'm going to put this piece of plastic that we took off earlier and put it back into place. It should snap right on. And finally, the front panel. Make sure you grab the ribbon and put that in first. Be gentle with it, uh, take your time with it. As you can see, I'm gonna take a little bit of time just to make sure I don't bend the ribbon or smash it in any way, and I take my time with it. Once I get it in there, I'm able to snap the front panel back into the system. And this is our brand new modded battery replaceable mod panel that we have now. So I'm super happy with it. Once we put that guy back in there, we can go ahead and put the top shell of the system back on. I'm going to do a quick test here and open it up. And my goodness, look how empty that is. That is actually insane. <laughs> that is crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the system over so we can finish buttoning up the whole thing together. I'm going to take the four screws that we took out earlier. I'm going to put those back in. And finally, we're going to put the port doors back into place. it be just the three of them. All right, that is basically it. I'm gonna flip the console over, give it a nice little clean like I always do in all my videos. Nice and clean, good GameCube. All right guys, the hard part is over. Now all we need to do is all the software and SD card setup. So make sure you grab your computer, grab your SD card, let's go. So now that we're on our computer, we can go ahead and format the SD card properly. That way it'll work with the GC loader. Just go ahead and insert the SD card into your computer using the SD card slot in the computer. Or if you don't have one, make sure you have a USB adapter that does have an SD card slot in it. That's what I have. I'm going to go ahead and insert it now. 
And as you can see, this is labeled as a new SD card just for the purposes of this demonstration. The issue with this is the GC loader only reads cards that are at FAT32. So if I try to format this card, it only allows me to do NTFS or XFAT. It doesn't let me do FAT32. So there is a program that I like to use and it's called Rufus. With Rufus running, it tends to run any card plugged in through USB. As you can see, it is reading mine immediately, my new SD card. And Rufus is used to make bootable drives in case you want to install Windows or any other items into your computer. But we are not going to do that for this video. We're going to go ahead and just make this as a non bootable drive. Keep pretty much everything the same. You can label this SD card as anything that you want. I'm going to go ahead and call mine GameCube. And now we can go ahead and change the file system to large fat 32. So I am going to leave the cluster size as default. Make sure you leave the large, large FAT32 as default as well and go ahead and hit start. It will give you a warning that all the data on this will be destroyed. If this is an SD card that you had laying around that you are reusing for this particular project, make sure you back up any data that you might want to keep. If this is a new SD card, then it shouldn't have anything in there and just go ahead and click OK. Now that that's ready, we can go ahead and hit close and go ahead and open up the browser of your choice. With your browser of your choice now open, go ahead and do a search for GameCube Swiss. And as you can see, there is a GitHub that should pop up immediately. We're going to go into that. And from the GitHub page, we're going to go to the newest release. As of this video, the newest version is 6 revision 1622. So we're going to go down to the list of assets here and download this 7-zip file. Once that's downloaded, we can go back to the desktop. With our SD card formatted and Swiss now on our desktop, this is where I'm going to be using or working with it from. I'm going to go ahead and open up the SD card that we just formatted with Rufus. If there are any files in here, you can go ahead and delete those. These are not a big deal. And we're going to go ahead and open up the 7-zip file. Go ahead and go inside this folder and you'll find a bunch of options on how to actually run the homebrew. There's many ways to run homebrew on the GameCube, which is pretty cool. But the one we're going to use is going to be ISO. You would think you would use GC loader as the option and you absolutely can. It'll work just fine. The only thing I don't like personally about this is that it skips the boot screen for the GameCube and I, t I enjoy it. I love boot screens. If you don't care about that, go ahead and grab this and drag it into the root of your SD card and Swiss will boot up immediately. But if you like that GameCube jingle, go ahead and go to the ISO folder instead. Here you'll find three files, one for the Japanese version of the GameCube, one for the North American and one for the European. Since mine is a North American GameCube, I'm going to grab the NTSC U version and drag it into the root of the folder. And from there, we can rename it to boot. Once that's done, it should boot up immediately. But there's one more thing I want to do just to make sure everything is working fine. I am going to create a folder called games and the GC loader only reads ISO uh, game. So if you happen to get one that's like a different file format, you will have to find a way to convert it to ISO because otherwise it will not work with the GC loader. You could use a Nintendo Wii with that has homebrew and that is modded to back up your GameCube discs. But this video is not going to focus on how to acquire those discs. So for now, now that our SD card is ready, let's move back over to the GameCube. As you can see, it booted into the Swiss folder and it created a Swiss folder right off the bat. I assume it's for the settings, which it looks like it is. We'll mess around with that some other time. But for now, let's just go ahead and look at the games folder. And it looks like it is reading Metroid Prime, Resident Evil, Resident Evil 4 and Super Mario Sunshine, which are the games that I included in uh, the SD card. And I also threw in the 240p test suite, which will help me calibrate the GameCube with my RetroTINK 4K. So for now, for the testing purposes, let's go ahead and run Resident Evil 1. So 
So it looks like it's reading the game just fine. This is not calibrated with the retro thing, so it might look a little bit funky. So I'm skipping through all the cutscenes so, so I can get to the gameplay. And yeah, it looks like it's reading the game just fine, loading fine, the cutscenes look fine. So we are we are in to play some GameCube games, guys. I am super pumped. This GameCube is now ready for many more years of action now that we put a GC loader in it so we can play the GameCube ISOs. And we added a silent fan mods that is actually more efficient than the one that was on it before. We also added a battery replacement mod that way we can change the batteries anytime that we need to. And in the previous video, we completely cleaned it up. So this GameCube is ready to go. It may be in the next video, we'll do the finishing touches, which is usually what we do. And that's where I show you guys all the accessories that I buy. Some of those accessories will actually help some of the mods that we already installed in here. So stay tuned for some more. I already have all the parts, so I'm super excited to start that video as well if you guys have any questions make sure you put those in the comments below so i can help you guys out in any way that i can the one con that i do have about this gamecube is that it does completely remove the disk drive that was originally in there it does not it does not work with it in it you have to ch choose either or now there are other mods out there that actually leave the disk drive intact but since my disk drive was broken this was no issue for me whatsoever so there are other options for you guys out there just so you guys know i did the research i did all the looking up that i needed to to make the best video possible and this is the one that fits me personally the most so hopefully guys this helped you guys out if this is your kind of thing where somebody goes through cleans up systems repairs them if need be and sometimes they mod them make sure you hit that subscribe button that way you're notified every time i post a video i'll see you guys next time bye bye